coming up next on the Panther Morning News, we kick Latinx History Month into high gear with not just one, but three special segments. The Enrichment Week travel video premieres today. Good morning, St. Mary's. I'm Jacob. And I'm Tommy. We start today's show by welcoming the 8th graders from the School of the Madeline, just up the street from here in what North happened? Berkeley. We hope you enjoy your day and that all your questions get answered. And in, and in other student <laughs> life news, we hope you enjoyed learning more about the travel opportunities for this year's eWeek. The student and parent guardian meeting will be held on Zoom Monday, September 19th, beginning at 6 p.m. for all those interested in traveling this year. Here's a short video showing this year's planned trips. And yesterday was the successful launch of Latinx History Month with an outstanding brown bag discussion during study time. Almost every day this month, we will take a look at prominent person from Latinx history. Today's spotlight is on a congressperson from New York. I am Gina Sorby, and today we are highlighting Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for Latinx Heritage Month. She was born in the Bronx in New York to immigrant Puerto Ricans. She is a politician activist and is the youngest woman ever to serve in U.S. Congress at age 29 and is in her second term. While in college, she was an intern for U.S. Senator Ted Kennedy's office, where she was the only Spanish speaker and was speaking firsthand with families whose loved ones was taken by ICE. She then worked as an organizer for the Bernie Sanders presidential campaign and traveled across America, which prompted her to run for office. Her platform supports workplace democracy, Medicare for all, tuition-free public college, and abolishing the U.S. ICE. She works to create a pathway to citizenship for more immigrants. She believes that everyone has the right to an affordable education and advocates for full federal funding so all students have access to affordable schooling and college. She fights for basic levels of dignity so that no person in America is too poor to live. Thank you. And here's news from the Environmental Club. Tomorrow is World Manta Day. Giant manta rays are an endangered species and need our protection. Manta rays can grow up to 20 feet and have one of the largest brains of any fish. They are extremely intelligent and exhibit complex social interactions. They are also completely harmless to humans and striking with their beautiful features. And every manta has a unique spot pattern on its belly that is as unique as a human fingerprint. And we are holding a candy sale at lunch today at the Cross to support our sister school, St. Mary's Kenya, with a portion of the proceeds to go to Wadamu Marine National Park off the coast of Kenya, where rays can be commonly found. Please come by and pick up some candy and see more about these beautiful endangered creatures. And attention all Panthers, homecoming is coming up, so it's time to get your tickets. Tickets will be sold for the next two weeks at A Block for $25 starting next Tuesday. Make sure to get your tickets before homecoming on October 1st because they will be $40 at the door. See you there. The other day, CCAT took to the hallways and offices of St. Mary's interviewing teachers about Latinx month. Roll the video. Hi, we are Edgardo and Gina from CCAT and today we'll be interviewing Ms. Becerra on what being Latinx means sir. Hi everyone, thank you. Um, being Latinx, it means living between two cultures, two histories, um, two identities, growing up here in the United States, but also growing up um, going and visiting Mexico. So it's just this big mashup of my histories, both 
um, the Native American as well as the Spanish histories and the customs that now my family, the Mexican side has, as well as the American things that I've also grown up with. Mr. Alvarez, on what being Latinx means to him? Hi everyone. So uh, I am Mexican American. You know, my family is from Chavita, Michoacan. Um, and for me, everything that goes into the culture is so beautiful, um, whether it be the food, the cultures, the traditions, it's just a part of my identity. It's a part of who I am. And I'm incredibly proud to be Latinx. Second question is, do you have any unique traditions that you do with your family? During Christmas time, we make special foods and gather to sing special Venezuelan Christmas songs, some of which have been played over our St. Mary's morning announcements. And then for New Year's, we have a lot of really special traditions, some of which I've gotten to celebrate with students in my Spanish classes here. Uh, we run around with suitcases to dream of travel and adventure. We eat grapes together, one for every month of the year to hope for prosperity. And we also wear yellow underpants for passion. And in counseling news, attention all students. The counselors are excited to present the new learning lab, which is a drop-in tutoring center in the shade during A Block. The learning lab will be open Monday through Friday at A Block, and tutors will be available to help with math, with math of all levels, biology, conceptual physics, chemistry, Spanish all levels, and English. Come on by for help in any of these subject areas. And now here's Tori with your Panther Athletics. Hey Panthers, the St. Mary's golf team concluded their successful opening week yesterday in the home opener as sophomore Olivia Crawford shoots a 39 to help push our Panthers to a record of 3-0 in defeating El Cerrito 135-157. Way to go golfers. Congratulations to the ladies Panthers tennis team which defeated Hercules yesterday by a score of 7-0, running their league record to 2-1. The entire team played well but special recognition goes out to fresh freshman Kaylee Cotter for her singles debut winning 6-4, 6-2. Also to juniors Kiki Burlingham and Mia Crisbaum at the number three doubles who defeated their opponents 6-0. The match of the day was won by Helen Pollock who fell behind 4-0 in the third set but won six games in a row to compete the 6-4 win. And today in sports, Varsity Cross Country participates in the Woodbridge Invitational down in Southern California late tonight. They're on the road now as we speak, and I'm sure they're watching us here right now. And then, t then tonight's read out here at St. Mary's as the girls volleyball teams host Hercules. Frost off at 4, JV 5.30, and our own Varsity Squad at 7 p.m. Remember to come out and support the Panthers and wear your red. That's it for for sports and now back to Jacob and Tommy. Thanks Tori, we don't have any birthdays today, but over the weekend, a very happy birthday to Caden Adia, Cameron Bazile, Jameson Da, Naomi Fogelman, Colm Gallagher, Layla Guerrero, and Kyle Wong. Happy birthday to ya, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday to you. And before we leave today, there's a two additional announcements. Remember, Panthers, there is no school on Monday. That day is set aside for work on the E3 accreditation process to analyze data that the school has collected over the past year. And then to end off our show on a positive note is the return of a special segment, a throwback from a couple years ago. Let's head over to Studio B with the details. I'm Rainy from Inclusive Community, and this is Yay for the Day, a segment meant to bring good news to you weekly. A Los Angeles-based nonprofit is helping reroute perishing produce to communities in need of more fresh fruits and veggies all over the country. Since 2009, Food Forward has rerouted 250 million pounds of food from landfills and delivered over a billion servings of fresh produce to food insecure communities. Based in Southern California, Food Forward has mastered the logistical challenge of rerouting produce destined for landfills to communities that need it. And now back to Jacob and Tommy. Thank you, Rainey. That's it for today. Have a great weekend, St. Mary's. And see you back here on Tuesday morning.